In this video, we're going to be looking at Java interfaces and uh, what exactly are they. And we're also going to be seeing a few examples of Java interfaces. Um, Java interfaces are, if you want to think of it this way, they're an implementation of an abstract data type. So what was an abstract data type again? We remember seeing lists, stacks, queues, trees, binary search trees. These are all abstract data types. They're a set of, of, of data and how they're structured and the operations that could be performed in relation to that data. So when it comes to Java, it offers us a way to actually represent those abstract data types. And the way to do it is to use interfaces. Um, what's, what's neat about interfaces is that we can define the functionality of a certain component of Java without concern for the implementation. And this is exactly what an abstract data type is. We're actually defining the set of data and the operations that could be performed on that data, and but we're not saying anything about the implementation. And this is exactly what a Java interface is. The Java interface is a Java component that will specify all the method signatures. And a method signature, as you know, will have the return type. So whatever that function returns and the parameters that it takes. So if that was the black box of a certain operation, then you're specifying what goes in and what comes out without any concern for the implementation inside, what we're doing inside. This could, we'll leave it to someone else. This is the, the, the body of the method you know, or the implementation and we're just going to leave it to someone else who's going to define a class and who's going to implement that interface. And when they're going to implement that interface, they're going to have to provide bodies for all the methods of that interface. So all we're doing in an interface, we're providing the ins and outs for all of our methods and operations, and we're leaving it to someone else who's going to come later, and, and they're going to define how exactly uh, it, it is being done so that we take it from the in and give you an out. So this is a Java interface. Let's look at a few examples here. Um, the first and most obvious example is the list interface. Uh, the list interface has a few common um, methods such as the addition of an element to the list, checking if it's empty, getting an element for, uh, from that list, removing an element from that list, and um, the list interface does, doesn't specify the implementation. Someone else will come and specify that implementation. Who is it going to be? Well, we have two examples here. In Java, we're also provided the ArrayList class and the LinkedList class. These two classes actually implement the list interface. If you look at their code, you will see that it says ArrayList implements list. And uh, um, encapsulation basically means that uh, we, we've hidden the, the implementation of a certain method and we're just providing you the API or whatever, the interface that you need to worry about. So someone who might want to use a list, for example, without concern for whether it's an array list or a linked list, will simply define it or, or specify it as being a list. So you can use it in your code. Okay, I, I want my methods to manipulate a certain list. I want it to take that list and add an element to that list. I don't care what that list is actually going to be doing in the background. Uh, uh, and you're going to leave it to someone else to define your list. So what you're going to do is you're going to just use that list and, and uh, you're going to be using its methods, the methods that it, it exposes to you. And then someone else, if you use for example the array list, someone else is going to use the array list, then um, this, this will eventually implement the, the functionality behind your list. Um, another interface is the comparable interface, and uh, one of its uses is for uh, binary search trees. Remember we talked about binary search trees and we said that uh, one of the defining aspects of a binary search tree, without which a tree would not become a binary search tree, is the fact that its elements are comparable. All the elements within the binary search tree must have a way to compare, uh, uh, to be compared with respect to one another. So if we're talking about numbers, then this is easy to think of. If we're talking about uh, letters, then it's also easy to think of. But if you've defined your class, say, of animals, and you have dogs and cats, how are you going to be able to compare them? Then what you're going to do is you're going to take your classes, and you're going to implement the interface comparable. And this interface has only one method. Remember, the list here had a couple of methods, a bunch of them. You could look at the list uh, interface code. In this case, there's only one method, and it's compared to. And this compared to, someone is going to actually implement it. Someone's going to have to implement it when they uh, 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 implement the interface comparable in their classes. And this compared to returns less than zero if the element you're comparing to is actually greater than you, or it returns to zero if it's equal to it, or uh, greater than zero if you're.